Let's Take Action in Sigma Computing. Hi, I'm Katrina and I help folks understand Sigma. In today's video, we're going to be covering workbook actions, what they are and why you should be using them. So let's hop into a workbook. Here we can see that I've got a simple bar chart set up and let's say I wanna create it, an action for it. We can see here there is an action icon over here you will note that actions are currently in beta, so just keep in mind if you're watching this video, what you see in your Sigma instance might be different because Sigma's always updating their features, which is always really fun. I'm gonna click on the click icon and we can see that I don't have any actions in here. So what we need to do is first add something or identify how we want to prompt the action. The first step is always gonna be, what is the thing that we're going to click to prop the action or create the action. I'm gonna pull in a button since that's pretty obvious that we want to click on that. There are lots of different things that can initiate an action in Sigma. For instance, you can use a chart, a table, you can use a uh, image, which is super great for creating custom options um, or a different control element. So feel free to, to play around with it, but there's lots of options available. So I'm going to select my button that I have here, and we can now see that when I click on this button, we need to make a plan in order to have an action. So I'm going to click the plus sign to say what's going to happen when I click there, and I'm given a drop-down menu with a couple different options. The first option is going to, you can see the defaults to set control value because I've got a couple of those in there, and that's a very common scenario. And I'm going to start at the top and walk you through these options. Navigate is pretty easy. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's taking you from one part of your document into a different section of the document. This can be really cool if you're thinking about creating a landing page and you're saying something like show more detail. If you have used the buttons, the actual buttons, this is an option that is currently available within the buttons themselves. But think again about being able to prompt this action with a custom button in, in an image or through a, a different chart or something like that. So we can navigate. Set control value is going to be changing some sort of parameter or filter that is going to be on our workbook. You will note that the only options that are available here are things that are converted into a page control. So it's really important to understand the difference between a filter and a page control. Basically, the difference is in the title. A page control is a filter, a control, or a parameter, or something that exists on the actual page versus in an individual element. For now, just think about them as control options or settings that you want to change. We're going to have a couple different options here depending on the kind of control element that you have. This one we can see is only available for set to specific values. And that's because this is a list and there's only certain values that are available in here. And I can only choose all, win, or loss. This is W and L. We're looking at some baseball data if you haven't noticed that part yet. Imagine having a button that says filter to wins and you could click there and this is the action that you would use to set that. Next, we've got refresh elements. Again, basically what it sounds like if you need to pull in additional data or want to make sure that something is up to date, you can choose that one. Open a Sigma document is very similar to the Navigate where instead of choosing, you know, something that you have in within a workbook, you can choose something different. You can also choose same window, new window or parent window, which is also awesome that you get to have a little bit more control over the user interface. But I think most of the time you're probably gonna be using this last option of modify elements. You can think about modify element as having someone behind the scenes who is clicking and dragging different columns into different options in your element. So for this one, let's say we want to change something in here or in our bar chart. We can select what target item we want, and then we can also select how we want to modify the item. So there's column visibility. We can set something to visible or hidden. We can move a column from one area of your visualization or chart or table to a different section. We can swap something, which is going to just flip from one to the other. And then we can also set some scaling. We can choose different scaling options. Again, these other options, the set access scale is gonna be dependent on what options you have. 
Obviously, if I'm pulling in a table element, I'm not going to be able to change the axes on that because it doesn't have one. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the modify element options. So let's hop into a couple different scenarios that you will most likely be doing or at least should be doing with actions in your workbooks. The first one is going to be update a control element. In this example, we want to be able to click on either the win or the loss and have our attendance by day update so we can see how the attendance uh, is different if we're doing well or perhaps if we're not doing so well. So what we want to do is think about what action is going to prompt that filtering. Well, we want it to be based on this bar chart. Again, it's not available in here. And honestly, if we were to click in here, that would be the same thing as having a filter that's targeted here. So it's not really any different. Again, the new option here is saying, when I click on this bar chart, I want this thing to update. So what we're gonna do is select the element that we want to prompt the action. So I've selected my bar chart, and now I'm going to go to the action section, and we can see here that I have an option for set win loss filter. Let's edit this and pretend that I'm creating it from scratch. What I would do to create from scratch is click here and set these options. So what I want to do is set a control value because my win loss filter is a control, this is the one that I've selected. And what I want to do or how I want Sigma to decide what option to filter to is based on the values from a column. So when I select on a certain value in a column, I want it to populate that column's value or that value. So for example, we've got our win loss column identified here. And when I click on loss, this is going to be our loss attendance. And when I click on win, this is going to be our win attendance. We can see up here that this control element is updating. Again, I've unselected everything. Everything is included. I'm clicking on the L for the loss, and we can see that it's filtered to the loss. So you might be thinking, well, how does this action affect this thing? All I'm doing is the same concept that uh, we use every day for targets in control elements. Our, my target is selected to be on the attendance by day line chart. If I want my bar chart to also update, let's say I only wanna see the loss values in each element, all I would need to do is add my bar chart in here. We can see that Sigma is going to update. Note that when I click on here, it's just gonna to filter to filter both of these, and then I can click out or unclick to get both of my values. Updating a control element is again, most likely going to be a very common scenario there's a lot of different options because Sigma is so flexible with their control elements. There's so many different things that you can do, but here's something to get you started. The second thing I want to demonstrate is how to move a field. I think this one is super cool because it allows you to create extra flexibility within your visualizations, but at the same time, still controlling a little bit about how your end user is going to experience something. It's that guided exploration within your data. So we have a very similar scenario. We've got our win loss in our bar chart and we've got our attendance by day, but this time we have a new pivot table that's just showing some stats based off of the game. Let's say I wanna add some information to say, how are we doing when we lose? We can see here that we're adding in a color to change so we can compare and we can see that we definitely have more attendance when we're winning versus losing. And then just an overall total for our win loss. Again, if I go back, I can go back to my total attendance and my total attendance cost of goods and revenue by day. So let's take a look at how we're creating those actions to separate out our attendance by day and change what values are, are on our pivot table. Since these actions are prompted when I click on my bar chart, I'm gonna go to my actions in my bar chart. You can see we've got a lot of different actions in here, but let's start at the top. The first thing we're gonna do is select to modify the element. Again, this is saying that we wanna change how this element is constructed. The option that we're gonna start with is the line chart. Again, just adding that color to differentiate between the wins and losses. So what we want to do is move the column of the win-loss category into the color category. What this is gonna do is take it from the column list and pop it into the color option. So when I click on that, it's going to put my column in there. But if you noticed when I clicked out of it, it removed that column as well. 
So the next step is to create the inverse of this action, where instead of pulling in our win-loss, we're going to pull in just a blank or placeholder field of attendance. This allows us to have Sigma label things correctly, as well as swap in different levels of aggregation. When we move to the pivot table, we're doing very similar things, where instead of modifying what values are coloring or visualizing our elements, we're basically just telling Sigma how we want to break out our pivot table. So in this instance, we want to swap out our year into our date so we can see a grand total. We're also going to move our win loss column into our pivot table column so that we can break out our revenue, our cost of goods and attendance for when we win or lose. The next thing we're going to do is move that back where again, we're starting to create the inverse of these actions. So this is a trick that you can use specifically within pivot tables to add something, then hide that value. Uh, column visibility doesn't work the same way exactly with pivot tables. So this is the trick that you need to use when hiding or quote unquote hiding a column in a pivot table. All we're going to do is move the column from the column table or the column section in your pivot table, put it into the rows and then hide it in the row section. So this is taking it from columns and putting it into the rows or into the values, excuse me. And then we're going to hide that one as well. This is again, just hiding the win loss value. Then last, we're gonna switch in our game day. If you remember in a previous step, we swapped in the year to break out the rows. This time we do wanna see the actual date value. So it might seem like a lot of actions, but they are just the inverse of each other. One is moving something to a spot and the other is moving it out of that spot. So let's look at again at how all of those things fit together. When I click on here, I can see that my column has been moved to my win loss and that my win loss has moved into my column section. This is what I was referring to when I said that visibility doesn't quite work the same way in a pivot table. So let's take a look at what it looks like outside. So we can see that this is hidden in the value, but when we pull it up into the columns, it is still there because Sigma is still creating that group by statement on the back end. So again, a unique scenario with pivot tables, but I wanted to make sure to show you how to properly achieve that goal. Let's look at another way that we can use column visibility to create a better end user experience. In this section, I want to change what values or what columns are displayed, but still showing the same row value. So I still wanna see this value for my order number, but one scenario, I wanna see the stand information and the other time I wanna see what product it is. So what I'm gonna do here is tell Sigma when to show the columns and when to hide those columns as well. So let's look at this action that I have set up. You'll note that this is a custom image that I created. Again, one of the awesome things about being able to create these new actions in Sigma. So in here, I'm first going to modify this element. If I'm wanting to look at the stand information, I do not want to look at the product information. So first, I'm going to set the product information to hidden. And then I'm going to set the, the stand information to visible. Next, I'm going to come to my other button and basically do the opposite. So I'm going to say, when I click on this one, I do want to see the product information and I want to hide the stadium information. And that's how I create the ability to switch between visible columns. I'm really excited about this functionality in particular. It's something that I have had clients ask for and it's been really difficult to do in other platforms, but Sigma makes it really easy to also control what they can see or not see. Overall, I'm really excited for you to start using actions in Sigma. They're going to allow for so much more functionality and customization and flexibility within your workbooks and your data analytics. I hope you enjoyed this overview of actions in Sigma and thanks for tuning in.